I saw him staying over in the mosque, and I told him that he had to leave, right? And that was the first incident. Another incident... What, why would he stay over? I think he was here probably from Fajr, from early morning prior. He's, he stayed behind while everybody had gone, because some people like to stay and wait and pray just before the sun rise, right? And uh, because you get a lot of blessing for doing that. So they would stay and pray, and then after that, they would go home and go to school or work or wherever they're going to go. So I think he was one of them that stayed behind, but he stayed after, because I normally come here between 10 and 11. And in the I, evening? In the, no, in the, in the morning. In the morning. And then when I came, I heard somebody coming, you know, flushing the toilet. So when I went to look, it was him. And he's got on his, shoe, his trainers, and I was very annoyed about it because you can't come from the toilet and walking on the mats where we're going to do wuzu, and then from there we're going to come to the to pray. So I was very, very annoyed with him. He said, don't treat him as a child. I said, you're a child. If he wasn't a child, you know, you would not behave like that because you should know better, you know? And that was my last confront confrontation with him. And that's the last point that you can remember him that, being here? That was the last point that I spoke to him. You know, after that, if you come and pray, I don't know because I've not noticed him. Because normally when I come in, everybody's in the front row, I greet them and I sat in the front myself. So if he's behind, I don't know. After I finish praying, I go back to my office downstairs. What do you do as an organization to stop radicalization, to stop the signs yeah. that you might spot yeah. here among young people? Right. Well, we, we do talk to them about it. And I put a notice up on my door. That door there, there's a notice there, right? where I'm telling people that I, I don't want anyone to be staying in the mosque after we have prayed, because I don't know what conversation they'll be having. So I, I don't want to entertain them. And I said no one to come to priest po po politics likewise. But is, yeah. a, is a sign on a door enough? No, no it's not enough, but it, it rose suspicion. Brothers asked me why you put it up. I said I'm putting it up because I don't want anyone to stay here to you know, to be doing anything concerning terrorism or anything like that. I don't want anything to be in Salah Masjid. Are you doing enough to prevent atrocities? Because th this man went on to commit an atrocity. Yeah. I, I appreciate that you had no yeah. way of I've necessarily no telling that. No. But do you, do you feel that you do enough to highlight people that you believe may be having those conversations? I don't think you can ever do enough. You have to keep trying. Because sometimes when you talk to people, it's just like it comes through one ears and it goes through the other. So in our khutbas and so on, we're encouraging our imams to keep talking about it, right? So that our youths don't take up that, that line. Do you share things with Greater Manchester Police? Well, at one time I used to be on the police forum when they were having meetings and so on. We used to go, but that had stopped for a long while. But I have police officers coming and we sit and talk. Up to a couple of days ago, we was talking to, no, twice this week we were talking with the police, you know? And if anything like that is going on and I realize it, I'll be the fir first one to report them. Yeah. We know yeah. that there are other young men who've yeah. come from this part of South Manchester who've come and prayed at yeah. this building. Yeah. Raymond Matimba is yeah. one of them. Right. Yeah. He has gone off to fight for IS in yeah. Syria. Yeah. What can you tell us about him and why, uh, why that happened? You know, that was really a surprise to me when I heard that he has gone to Syria. There was one guy who used to come in here, an Afghan guy, and said he's teaching Quran. So he asked me, can you teach Quran to new converts? So I told him yes. So he used to sit there, about three or four of them, right? And uh, they used to be reading the Quran. So we leave them to do that because I thought that's what, they, that's what they're doing. But later on, I got to find out he was arrested. And I understand that uh, the other black lad went to, to Syria, and I believe he got killed there. You, you know, so all, all we can do is try not to have gatherings, because we're not, we don't know what, exactly what they're doing in the gathering, since we are not sitting with them. So that I'm stopping. I'm not allowing them to have any gathering anymore you know, if you're coming and want to read Quran while we are here, you can read while we are here, but when we are going, you have to go. So we no longer leave you in the building. Yeah, yeah. And Raphael Hosti, did he have 
connections here? Uh, tell you the truth, I don't know the names of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Can I know. show you the pictures? Yeah, you can show them the yeah. pictures. Let's yeah. See. So that is Salman Abedi, who was the yeah. one on yeah, Monday yeah, night. That's right. Yeah. Raphael Hosti. Mm. I don't know him. Okay, we believe he was a recruiter yeah. who came from this part of Manchester who right. who encouraged Salman to yeah. get involved with IS. Yeah. And then the other faces were here. Stephen Gray, Steve convert. Gray. I'm not certain of this lad. Yeah, I'm not certain about that. And that's that. Raymond Matimba. Yeah, is I think that that is a black lad. I think. Yes. Yeah, but there should be an Afghan lad. And Ronald Fiddler, he died in oh, Syria. He I know it very well. You know Ronald very I, well. I know him a long time. You know, I didn't expect he would do that as well. Because he was in Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. And then he came out back to Manchester and then off to Syria. Yeah. Uh, I know that he, because I know him from back in the 70s, it, no, the 80s, and he was living in Wally Range. Because mm. his sister was only living around the corner here. Mm. And uh, he went to Sudan to study. Yeah. And then he said he's going to go to Pakistan to study. Mm. So when he went to Pakistan to study, that's where he, he got picked up first. Right. You, you know, that's only what I could tell you about him. But I didn't know that uh, he had anything to do with terrorism no. until I, I, I later learned that he got some money from the government. Yeah. And I thought, probably if you got that amount of money, why would you not settle down and, you know, mm. with your family and so on? And then next minute, I hear, here he's dead. <laughs> yeah.